He went on for a good five or six minutes uh, about that, talking about how uh, women are circumcision for women, uh, not respecting the rights of women, not respecting the rights of gay people. And what's your, what's your reaction? And then we'll talk. Well, I like Bill Maher. I've been on his show a bunch of times. He's a comedian. But, you know, frankly, when it comes to the topic of religion, he's not very sophisticated in the way that he thinks. I mean, the argument about the female genital mutilation being an Islamic problem is a perfect example of that. It's not an Islamic problem, it's an African problem. Well, I mean, wait, 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 because he female... says it's a, hold on, hold on a second, because he says it's a, a Muslim country problem. He says that in Somalia... Yeah, but that's... Yeah, and that's actually empirically, factually incorrect. It's a Central African problem. Eritrea has almost 90% female genital mutilation. It's a Christian country. Ethiopia has 75% uh, female genital mutilation. It's a Christian country. Uh, nowhere else in the Muslim, Muslim majority states is female genital mutilation an issue. But again, this is the problem, is that you make these facile arguments like that women are somehow mistreated in the Muslim world? Well, that's certainly true in many Muslim-majority countries like Iran and Saudi Arabia. Do you know that Muslims have elected seven women as their heads of states uh, in those Muslim-majority countries? How many women but it is do not, we have but as head for the of most states part, in Reza, the United States? Reza, be honest, though, for the most part, it is not a, a free and open society for women in those states. Well, it's not in Iran, it's not in Saudi Arabia, it certainly is in Indonesia and Malaysia, it certainly is in Bangladesh, it certainly is in Turkey. I mean, again, this is the problem, is that you're talking about a religion of one and a half billion people, and certainly it becomes very easy to just simply paint them all with a single brush by saying, well, in Saudi Arabia they can't drive, and so therefore that's somehow representative of Islam. It's representative of Saudi Arabia. Right, but hold in on, Iran, I think, they, I, don't, I, they don't have... I mean, I think that Bill Maher's point is that these aren't extremists. We often talk about extremists and that we should crack down on extremists and why aren't Muslims speaking out about extremists. In Saudi Arabia, when women can't vote and they can't drive and they need permission from their husband, that's not extremists. Why aren't we talking why? more about what? Th that's not extremists, that's commonplace. Why don't we talk more about the commonplace uh, wrongs no, it's a, it's that are happening in some of these countries? It's extremist when compared to the rights and, uh, and responsibilities of women, uh, Muslim women around the world. It's an extremist way of dealing with it. But it's not extremist in that country, in Saudi Arabia. It's That's the norm. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's no, that's it's not. Saying. I mean, look, Saudi, Arabi Saudi Arabia is the, one of the most, if not the most extremist Muslim country in the world. In the month that we've been talking about ISIS and their terrible actions in uh, Iraq and Syria, Saudi Arabia, our closest ally, has beheaded 19 people. Nobody seems to care about that because Saudi Arabia uh, sort of preserves our national interests. Okay. You know, this is the problem is that these kinds of conversations that we're having aren't really being had in any kind of legitimate way. We're not talking about women in the Muslim world were using two or three examples to justify a generalization. That's actually the definition of bigotry. All right, fair enough. Let's just, does Islam promote violence? Islam doesn't promote violence or peace. Islam is just a religion, and like every religion in the world, it depends on what you bring to it. If you're a violent person, your Islam, your Judaism, your Christianity, your Hinduism is going to be violent. There are Buddhist, marauding Buddhist monks in Myanmar slaughtering women and children. Does Buddhism promote violence? Of course not. People are violent or peaceful, and that depends on their politics, their social world, the way that they see their communities, the so, way they see so, themselves. So, Reza, you don't think that there's anything more, there's the justice system in Muslim countries, you don't think, is somehow more primitive or subjugates women more than in other countries? Did you hear what you just said? You said in Muslim countries. Mm. I just told you that Indonesia, women are absolutely 100% equal to men. Mm. In Turkey, they have had more female representatives, more female heads of state in Turkey than we have in the United yes, States. But in Pakistan, Stop women saying are, things like in Pakistan, Muslim countries. Women are still being stoned. And that's to death. a problem for Pakistan. You're so, in right. other words, so you, let's criticize okay, I just, Pakistan. No, I just want to be clear on what your point is because I thought you and Bill Maher were saying the same thing. Your point is that. Muslim countries are not to blame. There is nothing particular, there's no common thread in Muslim countries. You can't paint with a broad brush that somehow their justice system or Sharia law or what they're doing in terms of stoning and, and female mutilation is different than in other countries like Western countries. Mm -hmm. 
stoning and mutilation and those barbaric practices should be condemned and criticized by everyone. The actions of individuals and societies and countries like Iran, like Pakistan, like Saudi Arabia must be condemned because they don't belong in the 21st century. But to say Muslim countries as though Pakistan and Turkey are the same, as though Indonesia and Saudi Arabia are the same, as though somehow what is happening in the most extreme forms of these repressive countries, these autocratic countries, is representative of what's happening in every other Muslim country is frankly, and I use this word seriously, stupid. Again, these kinds of oversimplifications, I think, only cause more danger. There is a very real problem. ISIS is a problem. Al-Qaeda is a problem. These militant Islamic groups like Hamas, like Hezbollah, like the Taliban have to be dealt with. But it doesn't actually help us to deal with them when instead of talking about rational conflicts, rational criticisms of a particular religion, we instead so easily slip into bigotry by simply painting everyone with a single brush, as we have been doing in this conversation, mind you.